Hello everyone, and welcome to Far Science Show. This is the first, 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 first episode. So I would cordially like to welcome you and introduce you to the Erlenmeyer Flask of Science. Um, it helps inspire me and gives me good ideas. But you know what else gives me good ideas? You YouTubers. So um, I'm trying to do a weekly science show and answer questions every week. And how can I answer questions if no one poses any? So you guys should ask me questions in the comment box. So, today I'm going to talk about nail polish and nail polish remover. And how does it work? You know, you go to the store, you pick up some nail polish, you gotta get some nail polish remover. Most of the time that's acetone, but how does it work? Black magic? No. Science. So, I'm sure all of you guys know what nail polish is. If you guys don't know what nail polish is, I'm not sure how you have access to YouTube because it doesn't really make sense to me. So, um, let's start off with the composition of nail polish. Nail polish has three main different types of ingredients such as thickeners and hardening agents, solvents, and then you have coloring agents. Thickeners and hardening agents basically help give nail polish its final appearance so that it's hard and it's not jelly unless you get that weird shellac gel nail polish and then it has some kind of weird composition which you need to fix with curing. Then you have solvents, which are things that dissolve the main ingredients. So your hardening agents will tend to be bonded to different types of resins. And so these resins really are only soluble in certain types of solvents, um, usually a little bit more polar. Um, and the most common types are acetone and acetates. For those of you who don't know the structure of acetone, I have a structure drawn here on the back of expertly crafted Hello Kitty paper. So you have a carbon, carbon, and carbon. These two carbons on the end have three hydrogens attached to them, and this one has a double bonded oxygen. So even though it's almost uh, symmetrical, it still has a little bit of polarity. So then you also have coloring agents, which helps give your nail polishes the color of the entire rainbow. So this one is lavender, but this one is the shiny blue color, and I'm sure you've seen them in all different types of colors, such as taxi yellow or whatnot. Um, and then you basically get the final product that looks really, really pretty. So how does it work? So you originally put the nail polish on your nails. And it has an amalgam of all three of these things, but the solvents that are used tend to be organic, so they'll evaporate in the air, and then your hardening agents and everything else that makes the composition your hardening agents and your colors and the rest ends up forming this polymer. And the polymer is, end result, your nail polish. So, to remove it, you have to use another type of solvent, so you'll usually use acetone. And acetone, like I said, is something that most nail polishes use as a solvent to begin with. So, um, you can also have some types of non-acetone uh, nail polish removers, so you can have an acetate base. Um, but if you're using something like glitter polish, you'll use a acetone because glitter is a pain in the behind to remove. Um, so basically what happens at a molecular level is you put this acetone in there and it gets in between all of the polymers that are formed from the hardened nail polish and it breaks up those polymers so then your polymer just becomes these minute little carbon chains and then they're not as strong anymore and then they can come off easily and lo and behold you have normal fingers. So. Um, there's a little bit more science to that that has to do with polarity and hydrocarbons, but that's for another date. Um, okay, I wanted to thank you guys again for watching this video. Hopefully it was informative. If you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment box, and please subscribe. Thanks!